the worst memory. So, uh, they, really well. And the short, the short answer is really well. Uh, when you're writing a film based on a true story, like I went out to, I read this article in the Globe in November of 2010, and sort of flew out to New Brunswick a, a day or two eight later, and then went back again and explained to Craig and the family, like, listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this story, but I'm gonna fictionalize some things, and. You kind of then forget about it, but when we were in New Brunswick filming on the beach, Ruth, the real Ruth, was there and was freaking out, saying, "My mom doesn't smoke." And I'm like, "Oh right, this is, these are," and uh, and we're explaining that you know it's we fictionalized some things. Remember the conversation we had before, and and Cromwell come, came up to me after with Ruth and said on the beach and said, "Ruth really wants to read the screenplay," and I and I said, "There's," I said to, to James, "No way." and just sort of turned her away. I, I later said, sorry for being a jerk, but there's no way that Ruth wants to live with reading the lovemaking scene about her parents for a year and a half. When she sees it, she'll be fine with it, but uh, <laughs> I don't want to put her in that position. And when Ruth came to Toronto, the first thing I said to her is, so what do you think of the lovemaking scene? And she's like, eh. Uh, <laughs> but really, they, uh, they couldn't have been more generous about it. Uh, we showed the rest of the family the film in Halifax. They, a lot of them came down, and, and a lot of stuff that I didn't intend to get right, I did. So I, I think in the spirit of who they are and what I think I got it really right according to their reaction and the stuff I made up, they, they seem to go along with that. Yeah. yeah. One I, this is the first one based on a true story. Uh, I just, you, know, you sort of, you go with what you think would be in the spirit of it. Like, I mean, like the, the idea, if you'd read the Globe article, you'd think this film was all true. But there's lots of stuff like Chester didn't exist. But there, subsequently there's a guy that existed that was a lot like Chester from the Morrison family. So it's, it's, it's a bit of a blur. But in reality, Craig went to, went to court six times because of this. And the thing that interested me about the story was here's a guy that it was 87 or 88 that started building the house. And that stuff's all true. I got the building right. And the, the, actually, the, the part that's probably the truest is the baseball story. Like, I, I, I filmed it when I went out to St. Martin's, and I almost used it verbatim, uh, what he, he had said. And he still has that baseball. And when we went out there, of course, everybody in the crew wants to get a picture with Craig with the baseball. <laughs> so we probably devalued the baseball, probably about $20,000, which is handling it. He didn't know, so. Yeah, right here. What was the story? Did you uh, keep following um, what I'm trying to say? Was that all, all of the story all done? Um, like, was that, or did you have to keep going out there, like, to find out the next development? No, so when I read it, like, that part about him, the front page of the paper and stuff like that, all really happened. So when I read it in November of 2010, the court case had been solved. And really, what, what the final one was. The, the Globe and Mail article that I read was really about the incredulity of A, this AD, he was 92 at the time, having gone through this. But uh, really the, what happened, the end result was the court put a lien on the house saying that Craig could stay there as long as he, him and Irene wanted to. But when they sold it, then they'd have some trouble, which they're still trying to resolve. But they subsequently had a, a whole bunch of hearings about, the, about this building inspector. And the, it was a bit of a... It was, a, it was a complete joke in terms of what they had done to him. And I, I actually tamed that stuff down. I, I spent a lot of time going back and forth with Gary Fulton, the lawyer, who, who really helped me with the legal stuff on it. Mm. Yeah, right here. What in your interpretation was the meaning of, of uh, the pearls that she wore constantly? So, so what's the meaning of the pearls? So I got this, I'll, before I answer that, how many women notice the pearls? Oh, yeah. Yeah, how, many, how many guys notice the pearls? <laughs> really, really, we get that question a lot from the women. Uh, I wish I had a really smart answer for it, but <coughs> sorry, it, it came from Jean Viev. Jean Viev really felt that her character would wear pearls, and uh, it makes me a lot more brilliant, so it had nothing, <laughs> nothing to do with me at all. She just felt like that would have been one of the things that either was an heirloom or or Craig would have would give, and it was really important. And so the only time, which you can't really see, the only time she doesn't wear the pearls is when she breaks her hip. She doesn't have the pearls on, but that's, that was the only time she kept them on. Uh, yeah, right here. Yeah, um, the house that was being built, did you get a burn 
No, we didn't. <laughs> we, uh, we actually, no, we didn't. We shot, we shot most of the film in Northern Ontario, and we didn't need a permit. And uh, that was the irony of it. Uh, <laughs> what's that? Uh, we burnt it out. No, we, it is. It, uh, the, uh, our production designer, producer, sort of got us that area and thought it would be good to film it. We was about a kilometer away from her land, so we just rolled it to her land, which is really nice that it's not to code and it's still at her land, so it's, uh, it's kind of, it's, it's, so it's, it's still standing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was, is it um, uh, the, the theme of the bureaucracy, you know, you have to have all the papers and everything, um, do you, is that, was it a personal thing against the guy or is that the bureaucracy, or was it like a pure bureaucracy thing? It was, it was, it was, it was bureaucracy, it was just insanity. Like it wasn't the way it went. I mean, I, I tried to, I tried to make, as, and, and Craig, the real Craig told me this, that he kind of was always one step behind. And he was a bit of a jerk at first. Like, he didn't, he probably could have placated the guy, but I, I, I tried to, it was the bureaucracy. It wasn't sort of anything else besides that. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, well, it is kind of fascinating in the, the context that uh, a lot of this stuff, uh, you know, the laws that keep getting passed and whatnot, like, they're just leaving generations of people behind. When anyone's ever confronted with having to face something like that, like just, just go to City Hall sometimes. And, and I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And uh, to try and navigate your way through any of this stuff today is, is just like beyond belief. So you, you really captured something there in a uh, great fashion. Thank you. Yeah. Yep, man. Uh, what was the story for me? You know, it had, when I read it, it had everything that you want. I mean, I've done sort of St. Ralph, which is a 14-year-old, one week, which is a middle-aged person, and then I sort of thought, well, what point do you really pack it in and give up and start, stop trying? And I, I really was touched by, like, if, if you made it fictional, he would have been too old. Like, if, it, if like, there's no way an 88-year-old guy would start chopping his lumber down and milling it and all that stuff, and there's no way this happened. So you have this love story to me, which, and it was an act of love that he did it. So if you get these gifts of these great stories, wherever they come from, it seemed to be dramatically a backdrop that I could explore the themes of, you know, aging, love, still keep trying, and I, I thought it would be, I thought it would be something that a, I'd be interested in trying to write, and B, that hopefully audiences would, would like. So that's kind of what I always sort of a place I come from. You sort of you think, will it? Could it actually be born as a film eventually? So that's really where it came. Tell them where you wrote it. Well, where I wrote it. Well, this is a really terrible story. I wrote it in the south of France, but that <laughs> <laughs> don't hate me for that. That was just one of those things. That, uh, uh, yeah. So it was. Um, we took the kids there for five months and um, drank a lot of wine. So I was drunk when I wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right there. Uh, I'm interested in the uh, Harvey Morrison story about the adult children. Mm -hmm. It's off in terms of being more meddlesome. I mean, I tried to, uh, there were seven kids, so I, I sort of wrestled with how many do I show and stuff like that. And I, and I, I came down to two, and in and, and, and the Morrisons there's probably three or four around. But a lot of them live out west, and so, I don't know where all of them live. I know some of them live out west. So I thought, if I concentrate on the two and make them stronger, that would probably be dramatically better. Um, but I also try to show the opposing sides of it. Like, I mean, Ruth wants to take over, and John is caught in the middle. So it's a bit of, and I, you know, you, I think it's a classic struggle that, you know, people have with their parents and parents have with their children and stuff like that. So I, I, that's where I, I was coming from with that. Yeah, Are you a lawyer? Uh, yeah, the lawyer, you know, in reality, and I don't know if this, actually I should ask Gary, Craig told me he got, he got an acre, but then I thought that he's got two thousand acres. So I give him an acre. <laughs> when we were shooting that scene, I thought, you know what? I gotta give him five. <laughs> I think it was either Campbell Scott that said, "Really, just an acre? That seems kind of like yeah, you're making a pretty good point." I was like, "It's a good acre, though." I was like, you know, I put five. So uh, that's he did get it. Uh, I, I think. I think that, it, it's true in spirit. I don't know if actually Craig actually signed it over to. Should ask Gary about that.
Uh, yeah, right here. As the Did Ruth come around? Yeah. I, you know, she saw, she liked the movie, the real Ruth is, so probably. Uh, okay. No, I think, I think she did. I mean, I think that's, this is the interesting thematic idea behind the film is you can't really win. Like, he gets his house, he doesn't win. She's not, she still has Alzheimer's. Ruth is going to let him fall and, you know, yeah. fall yeah. down and, and think I should have done the opposite. So I don't, I never looked at it in terms of winning. They're all sort of pyrrhic victories of, it's just life. Like, it's like, what is the dignified way to do it? And when, when I try to explore that, there's no, my agenda wasn't, oh, it's right that Craig could do this. I mean, how many people can do what he did? Like, just physically be able to do what he did. So he's genetically lucky that way. She's genetically unlucky that she can't sort of share mm -hmm. it with him. And so that's really the more interesting thing for me, not sort of, it, it's, and I think it's sort of typical of all my films that you have this idea of a woman losing her mind or, you know, a guy that has cancer that's going across the country. And how do you find hope in that? And that's sort of what, and because it's true, and because when I went out and visited, I mean, Irene was not there at all, but there was something absolutely beautiful about her looking over the Bay of Fundy and thinking, holy smokes, this guy did it. So that was the, you know, interesting thing. Yeah. <laughs> Burn the place. I don't know, has anybody got anything to say to him? Uh, you're an idiot. Uh, no. <laughs> My advice is go into accounting. Uh, <laughs> no, I think that if you, I've always, I've come from, from a writer, like I direct and produce, but if you can write something that works on the page, it's going to work on the screen. And if you can get a story in 90 pages, you're going to, that's great, then people are going to give you money for it. Because I read so many scripts that are just god awful on the script and they never get made. So get by hook or crook, get something that's on the page. Yeah. Yes. 